Hey guys, welcome back to Critical Flick. Today I'm reviewing Godzilla vs. Kong. So I'm a little late to this review. I've been pretty busy the past couple weeks, but Godzilla vs. Kong premiered on HBO Max and also in theaters a couple weeks ago. I'm really excited to see that it had a pretty big showing in theaters. It's a really fun movie and I would have loved to go see this movie in IMAX, but all the theaters around me are still closed. Still got a couple weeks to wait before I can see some IMAX films, but I cannot wait. I'm hoping that it's still playing when I get to go because I really love this movie and I would really love to see it on the big screen. So this movie takes place after Kong Skull Island and the last Godzilla film. I do like how it's building this continuity. I know the 2014 Godzilla film, while I did really enjoy it, you kind of felt stepped away from it when you move forward into these movies, but this one feels like we're really continuing the monster verse, and I really, really do enjoy these movies. They're kind of my soft spot in film. I know maybe they're not the most artistic and most well-made movies in the world, but I really enjoy them. They're a lot of fun, and they're like kind of my comfort food when it comes to films. So I have to say right off the bat, I'm going to jump into a few spoilers in this film, especially since it came out a couple weeks ago. So if you don't want to hear any spoilers, you haven't seen the movie at all, maybe you'd want to wait to watch this review. In this movie, you have a villainous corporation that's trying to build this power source to create a mega weapon, which you will find out later on in the movie, is kind of used to protect the world against Godzilla and the other monsters. In order to find this super powerful mega source of energy, you need to use Kong to find a little hole to go into the center of the earth where they're going to find this. It's a little convoluted, it's a little strange, but I think it works out really well. And I think the fact that we have to take Kong off of Skull Island, he's obviously grown much larger, he's much bigger, and it creates this conflict with him and Godzilla because there can only be one apex predator, they're one major king of monsters, so there's some good fight scenes back and forth between Kong and Godzilla, and I think those fight scenes really stand out for me. I was really surprised how they were to use some interesting techniques with filming and making them not just two big monsters smashing into each other. In particular, there's a fight scene early on in the film where Godzilla comes out of the water and he's fighting Kong, who's on an aircraft carrier being transported across the ocean trying to get to the Antarctic to go down into the center of the Earth. And I didn't know how they would do it. Having, you know, Godzilla and his element, King Kong completely out of his, how that would work out. But you did get some really interesting scenes with the boats flipping, Kong kind of getting the help of the humans and fighting back against Godzilla. I really did enjoy it and I think it worked out really well. I think it was really interesting, like I said, how they're able to take two characters and put them in the middle of the ocean but have them still fight. And one of the criticisms that people have had with these films in the recent years is that the humans don't really seem that interesting. They just want a lot of monsters fighting and I totally agree with that. That's one of the reasons why I liked the last Godzilla film more than most people, I feel, because it really focuses super heavily on just the monsters fighting each other. And in this one, I think they you kind of learn from that and you have a lot less of the human interactions. It does happen quite a bit. I think they use it in a way that works mostly with King Kong, with Kong's character, because there's this young girl who's kind of built this bond with him. She's able to communicate with him, and you feel that. It creates an emotional impact to these movies, because in a lot of ways you don't really feel the emotion without the stakes of people love Kong or people love Godzilla and they're rooting for them and they're, you know, you get to feel that for these characters and I think it's utilized pretty well in this one in particular. As far as I say is building these connections with these huge monsters and making them more human in a way, someone you connect with on an emotional level. I love Godzilla. Godzilla is one of my favorite movie characters of all time. As a little kid, I loved playing with the Godzilla toys and just everything about it, something I've really enjoyed and I've grown up with, like with my Godzilla shirt here. But this one, I really enjoyed Kong. I, I, you know, I kind of wrote off Kong as just a big ape. I don't really, you know, connect with that character. I don't think he's that cool. But in this one, I really liked it. I really helped me build my respect and kind of appreciation for Kong as a character. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do moving forward because I think we're going to continue with the MonsterVerse. This is really successful. I think it's really well received. So I like how they built up that character in a way that makes me feel for him. And I can't wait to see where it goes moving forward. As far as the CGI... I think it looks pretty good. There's some moments, especially when it's in broad daylight without any lens flares and kind of have that matte sky against the characters where it doesn't look amazing, but it still looks really, really good. I think the night shots are fantastic. In particular, there's a fight in Hong Kong with all the neon and Godzilla's lighting up and he's fighting Kong and you have, you know, him with his big axe and everything. It looks really great. It's everything that I love from these movies. One of the things that didn't really necessarily work for me in the movie is there's like this conspiracy plot line that goes along with Millie Bobby Brown's character who you saw in the last Godzilla film. It just feels like it's kind of thrown in there to move the story along and kind of get some background for the villain characters and in particular kind of the big bad that you'll see later on in the movie which is like I said there's some spoilers is Mecha Godzilla. I think at this point most people know that but I know I get the purpose of it. It's to move the story along. It's to build that little part that little arc but I don't know, it's just a bunch of like little kids running around getting themselves in trouble. It felt like kind of the shoehorned in storylines you get 
in big monster movies where you have to have some kids in peril running around behind the scenes doing things. But I did think the performances were all solid. They weren't horrible. I never felt like anything was too cheesy. Just something that, as someone who loves the big monsters, I don't necessarily need in the film. I will say, before the movie even came out, I kind of knew that it was going to be the predictable Godzilla versus Kong, but then they'll come together at the end because they have to. You can't have these beloved characters kill each other. I do like that, you know, Godzilla did win. You know, I'm sorry for all the Kong fans out there. Godzilla beat him up. Godzilla took him down, but I'm glad they came together. And I can't wait to see, like I said, how it moves going forward. Mecha Godzilla. I like the classic look of Mecha Godzilla. I mean, I was kind of critical about the look of Godzilla in 2014, but it's grown on me. The original is a little cheesy in my opinion, but I, I always have a special place for it. But I do think the classic Mecha Godzilla is something I really like. So the new take on him, while it is a little more realistic and it is a little interesting, wasn't my favorite thing in the world, but that's a personal thing. I do think it's used well, and I think the fight scenes in particular with him were fantastic, like I said. I think the choreography and cinematography of these big monsters fighting in the city is done well. It can be really messy, but I think in this movie in particular, it's, it's nice looking. It doesn't look too messy, like I said. And that all being said, I think the cinematography is solid. I think these movies always have pretty good cinematography. And one of the things that I enjoyed about the last Godzilla film, which they utilize a little less in this one, but to an extent, is the perspective shot. So, you know, when you're overhead, you get the helicopter shots, kind of seeing the big monsters wide up. You zoom in on them and you're kind of on their level. And then you get some shots from down low, the pandemonium, the destruction of what's happening. And I think it's something they could really utilize. And I thought they did in the last film, not so much in this one, but it almost has that Cloverfield effect where you're down low. It's just so hectic and these monsters are humongous and it just creates that forced perspective of how incredible and powerful these monsters are. So if I were to rate Godzilla vs. Kong, I would give it an 8 out of 10. Really enjoyed it. I liked it as much as the last Godzilla film. I liked it a little more than Kong Skull Island. And like I said, cannot wait to see where it goes moving forward. And if you enjoyed Godzilla vs. Kong, let me know what you thought about it. It's been a couple weeks now. I've watched it actually twice now. It still holds up. Still really fun. Not one of those disposable movies. Like, oh, that was fun, but I don't know if I ever watch it again. I could revisit this movie multiple times. So again, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Leave those comments down below and see you guys next time.